Hi, my name is Nate, owner of Growers House, one of the top suppliers of cultivation equipment in the world. I help growers source equipment and put together some of the largest, most advanced cannabis growing operations. I am constantly looking for the top products and methods needed to grow the best cannabis. Join me on a tour where I get inside access to the industry's leading cannabis grow ops. This, my friends, is Canna Crips. It's Sunday night. We have just rolled into Snowflake, Arizona, and I'm about to go into a 40 acre greenhouse farm. And this farm used to be tomatoes, and now they converted it completely to cannabis. They gave me a pass at security, and I'm about to go inside and meet with Fife, the owner, so he can show me how they run such a large operation. Let's go inside. I just walked into Copper State Farms, and I'm here with Fife, the owner of the facility. So Fife, I mean, I know that you didn't start in cannabis, as none of us did. So what was your life like up until now? For the last uh, 20 years, I've been growing uh, tomatoes, uh, seedless cucumbers, and red, yellow, and orange bell peppers in, okay. in greenhouses. Basically, there was this green revolution going on right here in my home state. And I thought, wow, I've been you know, learning about commercial agriculture and greenhouse farming my whole life. And now there's real demand for it in the state of Arizona. Why don't you give us the story on this facility in particular? Because right. I know it's it's rich. It's 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 got a great history, and yeah. the beginning of it might be a little apocryphal, but supposedly <laughs> the first owner um, won the Canadian lottery and okay. decided that he wanted to build a, a greenhouse in the best place he could find mm -hmm. in North America. Looked okay. all over the place mm -hmm. and built the uh, the South 20 acres. And he was attracted to Snowflake because the elevation, the light intensity, the number of sunny days, the quality of the water. He ran that operation for about, I think, six years and then sold it to Eurofresh. They then doubled the size. Uh, Eurofresh ran it very successfully for a long period of time. And then um, they sort of gotten got bitten by the global financial crisis. They went through an extended, I think two rounds of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And um, Nature Suite, which is a, a large producer of cherry tomatoes, bought this Snowflake facility and a facility in Wilcox, Arizona out of bankruptcy. In my own time schedule, I think it was 2015, I thought, you know what, I really do wanna get into you know, uh, the greenhouse growing of cannabis. Right around that same time, Nature Suite announced that they were pulling out of the Snowflake facility. To me, it was like a sign, you know, the stars had aligned. I was looking around the state trying to figure out where I'd build a greenhouse and all of a sudden here's 40 acres already built. We bought the property in September of 16 mm -hmm. and um, we had our first harvest in uh, August of 17. Wow, that's great. And I mean, to think so many jobs, like Nature Suite probably pulled out because they could not be competitive with south of the border crops from Mexico, right? Yes. Yeah. And so that's happening more and more. And that means there are certain jobs in the U.S. that are disappearing. And who's going to pick up the slack? Right. And that's it's a perfect window for the cannabis industry. Five, thank you so much for teaching us all about your facility. I know I have an early morning tomorrow with Jacob, one of your growers, and I'm really excited to see the rest of this facility. You're in, you're in great hands with Jacob, so enjoy your tour. Thank you so much, Fife. Absolutely, thank you, Nate. So we're here in the breezeway, about to enter the mega facility greenhouse of Copper State Farms, and I'm with Jacob, one of the growers here, and he's gonna give us an inside look at their facility. Awesome, we're really happy to have you guys. Let's go take a look around. Let's do it. Wow, first room of the day. Jacob, where are we right now? So this is the mother room right now. We've got all of our moms here. It's basically the start of our process. So okay. All the cuttings are gonna come from these plants. Okay, these mothers are really big. I'd like to get a closer look at them. Sounds good, let's go. So our mother room's 55,000 square feet. We got it broken down into three zones. So we're standing in the B section right now, which okay. is our active moms. We'll be taking cuts off all these uh, active growing points to be stuck in the propagation room later on. We got 150 strains represented across about 1,200 plants. 100 strains are active, which we're currently growing for production. 50 are we're growing for trials through seeds or phenotypes, trying to make sure we got some stable genetics. Look 
look at all these plants. I mean, this row must go down, I don't know, 100 feet? Yeah, so on average, we get 350 cuts per strain when we're going on active cuts, 25 cuts per tray. And on here, we'll have a couple thousand cuts. So I think it's around 3,500 or so. Okay, so you guys are using, it looks like Grodan as a media? Yep, we got Grodan Rockwell cubes here and yeah. their trays as well. So okay. we're gonna go ahead and we'll be using those for all of our production cuts. Okay. Grodan's been amazing ever since we switched over to them and I can't see us switching again unless we experience problems. Okay, and I noticed there's this almost sawdust looking stuff on them. Yeah, so that's, that? that's actually our BioBest program from Copert. They're beneficial insects like Swirsky mites and Aphipar to okay. really help cut down on the amount of bug pressures that we see in this room. Yeah. Because really similar to the genetics mother room that we just left, there's always plants in here. So we're really restricted on the type of bio regimen that we can use. They are predatory on the pests and then they don't really do anything to the plants. They just live there and you know call it their home. They'll leave as soon as their bug pressures or the bug pressure that they were eating mm -hmm. has left too. It's kind of yeah. like they finished the meal and they left the restaurant. Well, what about like the difference between growing tomatoes versus growing cannabis? It's much, much more massive. So if you think about it, you know, they had 250,000 tomato plants per 10 acres here. Mm -hmm. And those plants would last for months and months and months. While we have a less number of plants, they also last for a less amount of time. So they're cycling through much more rapidly. Wow, very impressive room. So. This is much larger than the mother room we are in. Can you give me some idea of scale? Yeah, so this is actually about twice the size of our mother room. We mm -hmm. got two and a half acres of veg space here. It's about 100,000 square feet. One room, uh, 100,000 square feet. Yeah, just yeah. one room. It looks like you're growing in cocoa core. I see Medicor on the bags. What, what yep. do you guys have going on for, you know, media and for fertigation? Or we start out with our Rockwell cubes. Yeah. And then we immediately drop them into these Medicor bags that you're seeing. Cocoa is our desired media that we like running right now. Mm -hmm. After our trials back in August, October time, we saw that cocoa was the most uh, profitable mm -hmm. and that's what we're looking into right now. And then so for fertigation, it looks like you guys are, have a lot of drip line here. Yeah, so we have all Netafim drip systems. Okay. I and mean, we love the uh, real pressure regulating aspects of a lot of their products that we're using now. Got it. It really makes sure that we have a uniform fertilizer and irrigation distribution between all the plants that we have mm -hmm. spread out across this zone. Yeah, so whether it's in this corner of the greenhouse all the way to that one, they're getting the same amount of water every yep. time. Okay, so what about nutrient regimen? Are you guys using anything else other than your own custom blend? Um, so we do use uh, one product or a few products through a company called Keto Life. Okay. They do some amazing nutrient work. We're currently using their um, Silver Bullet Sulfur foliar applications. Uh -huh. We also did some experiments with their um, molasses as well. Yeah. And uh, it's just a great nutrient company out of Colorado. Mm -hmm. They're doing yeah. a bunch of great stuff as far as with cannabis fertilization. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do is based on plant reaction. Well, it's not just a matter of every plant needs this. We try to make everything uniform as possible, but yeah. at the end of the day, they still tell us what they want. I really want to dig into these LEDs that you have. Can we get a closer look at these? Yeah, let's go hop on one of those scissor lifts and take a closer look. So these are the new Lumigro Pro 650Es with the Smart Par module and their new light sensor installed. I can run the entire lighting system remotely from my phone. It's an extremely user-friendly system. Mm -hmm. And like you said as well, I've got complete control over this. So increasing the amount of blue spectrum or blue wavelengths in the last couple of days of flower actually improves terpene retention. So you can improve your potency based on your lighting strategy even in the last couple of days of flower. These lights, they know if there's a cloudy day and a few cloudy days, they have like predictive analysis that might front load some of the light that they get in the morning to make sure that the plants are gonna get enough light. Exactly, so what it's doing is it's constantly live time measuring and analyzing the light conditions of this room, mm -hmm. looking at our setting and our target, and then saying, okay, how do I need to affect or change the instantaneous or intensity of this light mm -hmm. to make sure that we achieve this goal in the set time frame? Yeah, I mean, as far as I know, this is the only fully automated I would say LED solution that takes in environmental factors that you can buy on the market. Right now that I know of at least. Exactly, this is the only fully automated greenhouse lighting solution currently out there. So we're in house 44 right now. We've okay. got about 7,200 plants in here, mm -hmm. spread out across an acre and a half. And uh, yeah, that many plants, you're gonna get some really crazy smells first thing yeah. in the morning. We uh, 
maybe take a stroll down one of these rows? Yeah, let's grab a lab coat to keep us off the plants and we'll go check it out. Okay. Jacob, one of the things I really wanted to get into coming into this flowering greenhouse is how you manage environmental controls, like in Snowflake, Arizona, where in the summer it can be 100 degrees, in the winter it can be snowing, mm -hmm. and you have to grow a crop year round. Yeah, so we have a Priva environmental control system and it's just amazing. So it takes into account all these different factors, you know, temperature, relative humidity, vapor pressure deficit, mm -hmm. all these crazy factors that we can use and create our own program and our own strategy. Okay, and the Priva system, I mean, that's commercial ag software that's used in tomato production, you guys were able to transfer right over to cannabis, right? Yeah, exactly. So Crevo is actually designed for large scale agriculture and it fits our needs really well here because everything is interfaced into one source. So I can control all of the environmental factors, mm -hmm. all of our irrigation, you know, lights, fans, vents, whatever it may be from just one platform. So you mentioned pruning just a second ago. I know you guys are using our Carmen Culture Trojan scissors. You guys buy a ton of them, but mm -hmm. I want to go over, what's your philosophy behind it? What are you going to try and go for? So the philosophy is just to pull off some of those lower shoots, axillaries, and little flower sites that aren't going to produce much for us in the very mm -hmm. end. So we try to pull those off and have the plant really focus its growing energy on those four main heads that we created in the veg room. Yeah, and this is the Grower's Edge trellis netting. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you guys use this in a vertical fashion, it seems, more than the horizontal fashion like I see so often. So what we're trying to do basically with this is open the plant up a little bit more, get some more airflow going down through the center of the plant. Mm -hmm. Right now we're in monsoon season, so we went from, you know, five to 10% average humidity to yep. over 50 basically in a week span. With that big of a change, you're watching powdery mildew and other mold spores jump up. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we have to stay on top of with our IPM regimen our environmental control strategy yeah. and everything down to this trellising and pruning to make sure that we're helping the plants by keeping these pressures as low as possible. Jacob, I noticed you have these packets hanging up above your plants in the flowering rooms. What are those? So those are part of our ProCure protection program. Mm -hmm. The ones that you're seeing right now are the ProCure D slow release packets. They give us the ongoing CLO2 protection throughout the crop's life cycle. Okay. We also have the fast gas Procure G and V packets that we use in between harvests to clean the room of any remaining mold and mildew spores that could be airborne or in some really hard to reach places. It's really essential for our IPM program and to keep these houses as clean as possible. Okay, Jacob, I am not lying when I say this is the most beautiful drying room I've ever been in. I would eat off this floor, it is so clean. Not one speck of dust. <laughs> We're a medical facility. You've got to keep yeah. this to the highest level of cleanliness. Oh, of course. And you guys have something very unique I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. You have a wall pushing out air slowly, okay? <laughs> so it's a slow dry and directional mm -hmm. airflow. We basically got our south walls that'll push air and our north walls that'll pull air. Mm -hmm. And effectively, it just creates this real slow draft over the plants mm -hmm. to make sure that we've always got new air, dry air coming in, but yeah. we're not blowing trichomes off the plants. We wanna make sure we keep those crystals nice and intact. Um, this was just cut down today, so it's still real fresh. You can probably mm -hmm. still get a real big whiff of vegetative and a whole bunch of terpenes. Mm -hmm. It'll be here for about a week or so until we get to the right moisture content. And then we'll go ahead and move it all into the curing room. Jacob, this room is the curing room, right? I mean, it's really cold mm -hmm. and it's kind of windy in here, a little bit loud too. Yeah, so this actually used to be the original cooler back when this was a tomato farm. Mm -hmm. So this is where they store the tomatoes before they got shipped out on trucks to grocery stores all over the US. Okay. So you're actually hearing the AC from that old system, which keeps it nice and cool for our workers in here. When we originally started, we were in these black totes that didn't quite give us the greatest um, airtight seal. Okay. We switched to sea vaults because we realized the benefit in having a sealed environment cure yeah. you know, within those little mini sea vaults. So no light, no air. Exactly. Okay. Also in these, we've also got the Bavita moisture packs to okay. help regulate humidity within the um, sea vault, help keep it at exactly 62%. Yeah. Okay, for the Bovidas, yeah. I know yep. some people use 55%, some use 62. You mm -hmm. like the 62? For we like, we like the 62. It helps really keep a lot more of those terpenes in there, we feel, and the bud mm -hmm. really extra sticky, which well, a lot of our customers like. Okay, how much weed is actually in this room right now? So because this is also our storage room uh -huh. as well, we're, we're probably looking at over a ton, close to two tons, 4,000 pounds of weed. Of weed. Wow. Dried, cured, packaged, and ready to go. 
Wow, the market is hungry. We're ready to feed it. So I made my way into the trimming room of Copper State Farms and I met up with Holly, who's gonna go over a little bit what they do here. So Holly, what is your role at Copper State Farms? I am in charge of preliminary QA. Okay. What I do is when it comes out of the dry rooms, mm -hmm. I take at least an ounce of it and I trim it up myself and I grind some up and I'll actually look at some under the microscope. Mm -hmm. uh, that way I can document if there's any issues like seeds or pests or mold and catch yep. that. Okay. And then I also do the good things like how much it weighed, what was the density, mm -hmm. is it larger than the last batch around, things we can compare to improve in the future. That's really interesting. So you're almost acting like an end user to grade the cannabis in different, uh, I don't know what you'd call steps. Exactly, yeah. yes. Normally every single strain runs through the Grebos first, mm -hmm. and then we can go ahead and send it to them because then it cuts out about 70 to 80% of our trimming time. Cool, I'm gonna go check out packaging. Holly, thank you so much for showing me Anytime. around. Anytime, glad you okay. can make it. So I've stumbled my way into the packaging department and I met up here with Ivan. Tell us a little bit about it. You're running this department, maybe among others you were saying? I'm the processing manager for everything that comes in from harvesting. Got it. As soon as harvesting comes in, I'm in charge of all operations. Mm -hmm. And right now we're ramping up to those 500 pounds. We're anywhere from 200 to 300 pounds a Got week. Got it. Trim alone, we can package up to three to 400 pounds a day. Wow. And popcorn, we can do anywhere from 100 to 200 pounds a day. Yeah. Um, we use Bovita packs mm -hmm. to uh, balance out our moisture. If, it, if the moisture comes in anywhere from 10 to 11%, we throw a Bovita pack into the package. And the Bovita packs work both ways. If there's too much moisture, it'll remove moisture. If it's too dry, it'll add moisture. So they, they've been working really well for us. So we made our way out of packaging and I found myself in this very quiet, sterile room with Alec. Alec, what's your role at Copper State? Uh, I'm the uh, extract lab manager here at uh, Copper State Farms in Snowflake, Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, this room right here, like you are saying, is very clean and it is the material prep room. Okay. Um, we take all flour from either the processing area or this uh, big freezer behind you mm -hmm. um, and grind it, mill it, uh, and get it prepared for CO2 extraction. This Vitalis, is that the next step in the process? That is essentially the next, uh, the next extraction process or next extraction step. Why don't we jump out of this room and go show everyone that piece of machinery? Sounds like a plan. So this is Elsa right here, the Vitalis uh, Q90. Wow. is able to process about 75 pounds of biomass per day. Currently we're running 25 pounds of material. Mm -hmm. We expect to get around 2,000 grams of crude oil from that. Alec, I saw this in the corner and it looks like this really insane crock pot, but I know it's much more than that. Can we go into this guy? Yeah, uh, so this is our Delta Separations Cup 15 ethanol extractor, uh, C1, D2 approved able to process about 30 pounds of flour every 35 minutes. Beauty of the system, in an eight hour shift, we can process about 300 pounds with a single technician. How much does a machine like this run? Uh, it's actually a pretty reasonable price tag, only about $84,000, give or take, depending on what uh, additions you get. Wow, that's crazy. And this is making you know a lot of things that we see in you know, vape pens, it's every distillates, shatters. Uh, with this, we can make isolates, sauces, shatters, crumbles, so we can whip different products. Like you were saying, we can make distillate, distillate cartridges. Um, this is really kind of a, a all-in-one system. Kind of set it, forget it, it spins, it dices, it uh, sets the prices. I'm here with Thotty, one of the co-founders of Root Sciences, this really awesome piece of equipment behind me, and he's gonna go into it a little bit so we can learn more. Thotty, what is this? So basically what we're doing is we're putting uh, the feedstock into the, the feed tank. This is already prepped oil ready to go. We use gear pumps instead of gravity-fed system, which allows us to pump oil through the machine versus using gravity, which gives you a less precise separation of the cannabinoids. So on the first pass, we want to pull out the terpenes. On the second pass, we'll target cannabinoids. We do that through temperature, and we do it via vacuum. So we'll modify those parameters to target terpenes or to target 
cannabinoids. Okay. The check valve is our barrier to vacuum. From there, it goes into the degassing arm. The degassing arm helps us alleviate any entrainment issues, which means we don't want any off-gassing happening on the evaporator, which can cause splashing to, uh, for residue to condense on the coil, and it'll come out your, in your distillate. So then the oil comes down the evaporator wall, the rotor is creating a thin film which agitates the oil and provides maximum surface area. On the first pass, the terpenes are vaporizing off of the wall, recondensing on the coil, coming down and coming out this side. The rest of the oil is staying on the evaporator wall and naturally coming out this side and pumped out here. Once we're done with the, once all the oils ran through the feed tank, we'll take this oil. This doesn't have any terpenes in it anymore. We'll put it back into the feed tank, change the parameters, temperature, vacuum. We'll yeah. pull a deeper vacuum. We'll run it a little bit hotter. Okay. And then we're going to do the same process. But because of those parameters, now the cannabinoids are going to vaporize off of the wall, recondense on the coil. Now you have distillate coming out this side. And then your residue, which is basically your trash, yeah. is going to come out this side. Root Sciences has been doing distillation for seven years. So we have the expertise and the know-how to run these machines, to train people on these machines, to support these machines, which you're not gonna see from other competitors. The other competitors that are out there are manufacturers. They don't know the process of extraction or of winterization and filtering and solvent recovery. They know distillation plants. Root Sciences knows the whole gamut, right? Because we started out in concentrates. We started out in extraction. So yeah. um, you're not going to find a better piece of equipment in the market. Very precise piece of machinery we have here. Absolutely. <laughs>
the gases that are released during curing, mm -hmm. they do that in real time. Okay, so it's almost like you put the flour into a receptacle and rather than burping it manually, what you would end up doing is that system will handle any exchange of gases within it so that you can cure faster. Right, and it's wow. a very simple system to use. Dried flour is put in the containers and they're connected mm -hmm. with quick connects and it's that simple. It has the potential to reduce labor costs mm -hmm. and eliminate any contamination. Yeah, cool. Well, I wanna hear more about that cure advantage as you guys get farther along in your testing. Okay, okay. we'll keep you updated. Thank you, Catherine. So that wraps up my tour of Copper State Farms. Catherine, thank you so much for showing me around this analytical lab. It's the first one I've ever been to. Well, I hope that you enjoyed yourself, Nate, and thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. Oh, thank you. After a long day of hanging out at Copper State Farms, I'm finally here with my crew, being able to relax. Jacob is joining us, and I got some of these. And uh, would you like one? Thanks. Jacob? To good times, to high times. Can of Cribs, episode three, Copper State Farms. That's a wrap. I think we're gonna go hang out with our crew. Thank you for joining us. Jacob, let's go. Hey. For real. I do what I really wanna do. Good job. I'm just trying to kick it, man. Yeah. I just wanna smoke and chill. Yeah. I just wanna smoke and chill. I just wanna smoke and chill. I just wanna smoke and chill with you. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. She said I smoke too much. Hey. Girl, you don't smoke enough. Uh. We could just smoke a feel. feel. One more young copper feel. Poof. I make that disappear. Gone. All good gas over here. Yeah. All good gas over here. We do that shit all year. Oh, yeah. Don't lay back off the wall. Whoa. We got way too much dough.